now the very last part here is the the evaluation measures for graph generation. So we're gonna look at two simple examples here. Uh, the first one is actually very simple. So if we have, how, how can we evaluate the quality of the generated graph? So as I said, it's a research area. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so how, how can we evaluate or which evaluation measures can we use to uh, judge the quality of the generated graphs? So in graph generation tasks, uh, there is uh, there are many measures and there is no consensus on which ones are better. So it's an ongoing area of research as I men mentioned earlier. And here what we want is to, uh, I want to kind of show you a few um, measures that you guys can search later. Okay, so I'm just opening uh, you know, the horizons for you to do some research and some reading on this. And first, uh, the first thing is like when we have the ground truth target graph. So when the ground truth target graph is available, it's actually so easy because it's much easier because we know that our target graph should look like this. So we only need to evaluate the distance between these two graphs, the distance between, you know, the predicted graph. So let's call it a G here and a G tilde and G, right? So this is the tar these are the target graphs. So what you can do, we can take the MAE, the mean absolute error between the adjacency matrix of A uh, target and A tilde target. You can take, for example, also topological mesh. So this is one thing you can do. You can look at these two matrices and calculate the absolute difference between them. And you're gonna get a residual here, for example, 0 0.01, right? So that gives you an idea about the closeness in topology. What you can do also, you can have a distribution, the distribution of this, the, the weight matrices here, the weights of the edges, right? So if it's a weighted graph and you calculate the KL divergence uh, between, you know, these two. So it will give you an idea about the divergence, about the distribution, the statistics, the, the distance between the distribution of these two uh, graphs. So that's one way. Another thing is to use topological measures. For example, you can use the MAE in, uh, you know, like um, between a centrality, so or eigenvector centrality, okay? Eigenvector centrality. So in this case, you take the A, the graph, and you turn it into the eigenvector centrality for each node. So if we have N by N, so here we have N uh, nodes, right? And then this is, you know, for, you do this for the A and for the predicted one, you're gonna get another. So let's call it here V and V tilde. And then all you need to do is calculate, you know, the distance between these two. So, and of course you need to minimize, uh, to divide by, normalize and divide by the number of no, uh, divide by the number of nodes because you're, uh, sorry, divide by the number of samples here for a single, we're doing this for a single sample, but you have many training samples. So this is a single, uh, training sample, so let's say, sorry, test sample I, for example, okay? So you can do this also for many other, uh, you know, centrality measures such as <clears throat> a degree or strength or, you know, so you can use these. And when you plot your, your when you have your plots, you can say, well, now my method, uh, this is the performance of my method, my MAE using for example, the matrix A, this is my MAE using, you know, the uh, degree centrality or different kinds of centralities. And it would be good to use multiple topological measures because this allows us to evaluate the soundness, the topological soundness of the predicted or generated graph. So this is relatively easier than the second case. And the second case here, we don't have, uh, ground truth. So this is, you know, the ground truth is actually unavailable and we don't even know the ground truth distribution of our data, uh, which actually the P data, we're trying to approximate it by this uh, set. So the P data is approximated by this set of available train samples or train graphs, right? And uh, we don't have access to the real distribution. So maybe the P data will look like this, right? But the real distribution, uh, including all possible samples will look like that, I don't know. So maybe a bit different or very different, but anyways, we're trying to approximate here because we are bounded uh, by what we have as data, as <clears throat> input data. 
So in this case, let's say the P model has generated all these samples. So these are the generated samples, right? Now we what we want to evaluate is the closeness between these. How can we evaluate that these molecules are sound, are valid, they are generated, they are close to this, you know, um, at least the, the, uh, the train data distribution. How can we actually do that? And this is, you know, not very straightforward to do. So we can use different measures, of course, but not all of them are very satisfactory, uh, I would say. So uh, here are two papers that you guys can read. So first in the systematic review that we used to do the, uh, you know, uh, the taxonomy of uh, graph generation models. So you can see that in this uh, in this, you know, uh, survey, deep generative models for graph generation, there are different types of evaluation metrics. So you can use statistic based. So these are general. So for example, the, the KL divergence, the maximum mean discrepancy. Uh, you can use also classifier based, which is a bit different. Uh, you look, you give to the classifier. Uh, so the idea here is simple. You give to a classifier, uh, you know, real data so g and you give it you know g fake and you want actually you want it to predict if you know you, you want your classifier to tell you if this is real or fake okay so if the classifier is able to classify this as real it means that your classifier that this this g tilde is really good so g tilde is good if the classifier identifies this as real for example, okay? So this is the, 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 the key idea of classifier base. So you can use two metrics for classifier base, the accuracy, which, you know, classification accuracy, and the FID, which is the pressure inception distance between uh, different distributions also. So in terms of biological data, we have what we call intrinsic quality base. So you can see guys that this is also problem dependent or data dependent. So when you have a, a molecule or a protein or a drug generated, you want to ev evaluate their validity. Is it valid? Like, can we actually create these bonds between these molecules, for example, or these atoms? Uh, uniqueness. Do we have unique representation of the graph, unique graphs? Are you are we generating something no novel or unique in terms of drugs? Uh, also novel, novelty, yeah, so that's what I mentioned. And now for the condition uh, specialized, these are, you know, they look at graph properties and more advanced things. So if you guys are interested, you can uh, check these in detail in the paper. So they are expanding on on the paper and you can also have uh, extra reading resources. So this paper was published uh, you know, like uh, recently in ICLR, uh, actually 2022, on evaluation metrics for graph generative models, how to, um, you know, like uh, define the, uh, you know, how to, how to evaluate graph generative models. So here they say, basically, uh, currently the standard process of eva for evaluating GGMs suffers from the three critical, critical limitations. First, it does not produce a single score, which makes model selection challenging. And also it fails to consider underlying edge and node features. Uh, and it is very slow. So these are the three key points that were mentioned in this paper. But yeah, so you guys can have a read at this and discover more about how are you going to evaluate your generative GNN models. Great, thank you.